All right, I'm recording. So um, we left off at community property yesterday, associate property, identity property, and inverse property. Um, now, how many of you have older brothers or sisters that go to college? Anybody? Going once? Nobody we has have some hands. We have some hands. Right, we got some hands. Feel free to respond to me. All right. Who's raising hands there? Give me a name. Uh, the one I can see is uh, Vinny. Vinny. Vinny, what college does your brother or sister go to? Vinny? Delaware County Community College. Awesome. So that's perfect for this. Vinny, so your brother and sister goes back and forth to college, right? They like go there during the day and then they come home, correct? Yeah, yeah. What is that called? Do you know what that's called? Uh, I have no clue. It starts Commuting. with- Commuting. And awesome. ends with commute. <clears throat> what, what was it? Who said that? I did. Yeah, I must be. <laughs> Ben, it is called commute. So the commutative property is just like that. It's when numbers go back and forth. So let me give you an example of that. All right. Um, here, we'll do an easy one to get you guys started. Uh, Gia, give me two numbers. Seven and 18. Seven and 18. So the commutative property for addition says this, seven plus 18, is the same thing as 18 plus seven. Notice the numbers are going back and forth. So order doesn't matter. Order hey, Harmon, Harmon, can you check to see if Connor got back in? He was gonna shut it down and try and get back in. Again? Yes. Okay. Um, got it. Thank you. All right. Thanks again. All right. So with um, the commutative property, order does not matter. So Gia said 17 and 18. So 7 plus 18 is the same thing as 18 plus 7. And I'm not a big fan of giving you the rope of dope. Um, definitions here. I like to give it to you guys in something that is more meaningful to you, not using big words. What about the associated property? What does it mean, Lily, um, when I say associate? Who is like an associate? Um, I don't know. Yeah, you do. If I say, who are the associates? You've heard it in the business world. It's a person you work with. Person you work with. So, in math, a person is not what we're working with. We're working with numbers. So the associative property is numbers you work with. And when I think of associates in like numbers you're working with, I think of grouping. So with the associative property, let me pick an easy one. One plus two plus three. It's the same thing as one plus two plus three, but in this case, it's how I group the numbers. If I say, oh, add one plus two first, and then add three, well, that's six. And if I say, well, one plus two plus three, well, two plus three is five, so one plus five is six. So in this case, it's grouping of numbers. Doesn't matter. So the associated property and commutative property are good for addition. And we'll talk about the other ones. Now these don't really work for subtraction. That's why it says properties of addition. Now identity, Mr. Maroney, 
What is your identity? If I ask you, what's your identity? Uh, it's like, what you look like? Yeah, like what you look like, like who you are. And in math, when I'm talking about who you are, okay, with addition, what number can I add to anything to get back that number? Kind of like, you know what I'm talking about? Like, how do I get back what that number is with addition? What number can I add to anything? <clears throat> Do you know, Maroni? Uh, the same number. Well, not the same number. You're going to kick yourself when you see this. I, I got a plan. Oh. Oh, zero. Zero. And I picked five because that's my favorite number. It's some of the first two primes, and it's the day I was born. That's why I like math. So identity property, five plus zero. Zero is their identity property equals five. It's... Uh, what number you can add to your number to get it back. So zero is the additive, oh boy. <laughs> additive, yeah, I'm not good at spelling. Really bad at spelling he is. Yeah, that looks good. Listen, Ben, I wasn't brought here to teach you to spell. I was brought here to teach you how to do math. So go to Mrs. Kirk and complain to her. Or who's your English teacher? Uh, ben, Mrs. Greg, right? Oh, uh, yeah. I know, I stalked your schedule. You're in there with my uh, niece, Lauren. Okay, so go to her and complain to her about my spelling ability, okay? Uh, we'll inverse, do. inverse property is nice and easy. If I'm talking about five, what's the inverse of five? Anybody know? Negative, Negative five. Negative five, very good. So in this case, it's the number that gives you, gets you back to zero. So it's the opposite. Easy enough. Now, I'll tell you that next week, I'm gonna give you guys an extra credit question. All right, and one of these properties is gonna make that extra credit question, or maybe some of the properties will make that really, really easy if you use it correctly. All right, let's go down here and let's talk about these problems. Who thinks they could tell me the answer to number one? If you borrow $12 and you borrow $9, how much did you borrow from me? Actually, better yet, let's pick on Dan. Dan, how much would you have borrowed from me if you borrowed 12 and then you borrowed nine? You would have borrowed a total of how much? 21. And borrowing's not good, so that's negative. Now I'm gonna skip number two and I'm gonna skip number three and I'm gonna go to number four and I'm gonna ask Mateo. If you have $18 and you spend seven, how much money do you have left? 11, I got you. I heard it. I heard the old for 11. All right, now why did I skip number two and number three? Well, I skipped those two because they have two negatives in the middle. And I know Ronan, the destroyer of worlds, okay, those two negatives make a what, Ronan? Positive. Positive. See? Zero. So we're going to change those two negatives to a positive. So now these problems become, well, do I pick on Connor knowing his mic doesn't work? I think I do. Connor knows 18 plus seven is, type it in the chat box. I'm typing, give me a second, gotta find the plus sign. Huh? 
Hasn't responded yet. Unreal. Give him a minute. How can I work under these conditions? Well, how can he work under these conditions? I'm here to just support Connor. Oof. You just answered. You answered? All right, we're going to have to take Connor anyways. I don't see an answer. What do you answer? He didn't. Not yet. I asked him to take the notes. It's okay. All right, we're going to go with a solid 25. 25. We'll work on it. I'll FaceTime him right next time. We're going to get him in this. Mr. Kozma. If you borrowed $13 from me and you paid me back $11, how much do you owe me, Matt? $2. $2. And owing is bad, so that's why it's negative two. All right, here we go. Any questions on that? All right, moving on. You try. All right. You guys got six problems. Why don't you guys try them on your own? Okay. And Connor just came with the answer. <laughs> you did? A little yes. laugh. A little laugh. All right. Tell him thank you. All right. You guys got six problems right here. One through six. And then I'm going to pick six of you randomly. And then. We'll probably be done. Uh, we'll be done for the day, and I'll let you guys finish up that eye Excel. But what I mean, I'm going to pick six of you randomly. I mean, I'm going to pick probably Brian, Tristan, Cassidy, Maria, Zach, maybe Olivia. I don't know. I only I can't even remember those names now. So there's a little feedback, Harmon, when you're up there. Okay. All right, Andrea, what'd you get for number one? Negative eight. Go closer to the microphone, Andrea. Or you can type it in the text box. She said negative eight. Okay. So Adria, if we have, if you borrow $6 from me and then you borrow $14, you would have borrowed a total of how much? She's saying 20. That's correct. $20. Sometimes these can be a little tricky and that's why I put it in context. Anytime I see a negative sign, I'm kind of thinking, you borrowed that money. Now, Zach, number two. First off, two guys take a what, Zach? 16. Ooh, very good. So you two negatives is positive, so you did 12 plus 4 is 16. Uh, Olivia, Zach just told us two negatives make a positive. So it is negative 22. If you borrow $22 from me and then you pay me back 13, how much do you still owe me? Negative five. Negative Try five. again. She said negative five. Okay. So it's a little bigger than that. Hold on. You can check your work on a calculator if you'd like. Negative is right, but negative. 
Try again. I didn't hear you. I said negative 35. Oh, negative 35. Okay. So did you make the two numbers in the middle a positive? Did you do it like the two negatives uh, are a positive? So negative 22 plus 13, did you write that down? Negative Good job. Four. Now you got it. All right. Let's go with Ryan. 25 minus 11. 14. 14. And then Kristen. Two negatives make a what? Positive. So what is 32? Plus 17. 49. Did you know that seven squared? No. You probably are saying to yourself, I don't really care. That is also true. All right. And then the last one, Ben. Negative 42 uh, minus seven. So if you borrow $42 from me, Negative 49. That is the work. Seven squared. All right. So my advice to you guys is this. One, try to do the math on your own and then check your answer using a calculator. And I would use one of these TI-84 uh, calculators. All right. So now here's what I want you guys to do. First off, let me stop.